When I was going to high school in Maine, uh, no one that I knew was talking about being recruited or athletic scholarships or full rides to play college soccer. I was concerned about majoring and having a good time. During my senior year, I read in the Bangor Daily News how UMF soccer had crushed Husson in a game 6-2. to two. I knew uh, Husson was really good, so this really uh, stood out to me. I knew UMF had some good players like Greg Dugas, but uh, I still didn't have any plan for going to college at all, much less playing college soccer. That changed really with one visit. I heard that the uh, UMF coach Rory Gordon was coming to my high school to see me play. I was shocked, first of all, and my first thought was why. Uh, but uh, needless to say, playing for Roy was like having a second father watch over you. Uh, he's really proof that great coaches don't need to dance along the sidelines and they don't need to constantly scream and yell with the, the full gamut of histrionics that we see so often these days. I remember at UMF looking down at the field many times and, and seeing the Sandy River flow through there when we'd head down for a practice or a game and thinking back now, looking at that, saying, you know, it uh, reminds me a little bit uh, like the, the river, the Sandy running through all the mountains and the hills and valleys and towns. A little bit of Roy Gordon, I'd like to think, runs through all of us uh, from way back then and, uh, and even now. When you leave, of course, everybody goes in their own direction. But a lot of us, uh, through Roy's influence, stayed connected with the game. Uh, some of us uh, coached. Uh, Ray DePompo comes to mind, a tremendously successful high school coach in the Tampa Bay area in Florida. Many, many uh, uh, winning teams, state championships, and more importantly than that, uh, guiding young kids, uh, helping them uh, get the opportunity to play in college. Uh, some of us went into broadcasting. Crossed in from Alves, side, volley, goal. What a tremendous cross and score. Barcelona take the lead. Xavi moves up and says, thank you very much. Others uh, stayed connected with the game through uh, becoming referees and, and officiating uh, at the top level. When you think of uh, players who played for Roy, Mike Berticelli has to come to mind because he uh, took uh, uh, part of what he learned from Roy and went on to be a tremendously successful collegiate coach, putting his mark, a profound mark, on the college coaching community in the country, really. Go, Irish, go! What I remember the fondest about Coach Berticelli was that he could get the most out, out of anyone. He, he was more sincere. He was more um, hospitable. He was more warm. Uh, when he talked to you, uh, you could see that he was honest. I think because he could influence people and whether he would have done that in business or coaching or anything else, I think he liked seeing himself have a positive effect on other people. He was the kind of guy you could tell right off. His family was first, uh, but his life in soccer was probably equal to. He got the opportunity to bring a group of guys in and really help them become better men more than anything else, really help them mature and become good people. And I think he enjoyed you know, watching people do that, and come back and see them when they were older and know that he really had an effect on their lives positively. and Very motivational, always pushing you to stretch and strive for things that if you left to yourself, you, you may not have achieved. But he was always pushing people to 
uh, to make themselves better. What I remember the most was the role that he played as a father for uh, his players and his teams. And a lot of people looked at him not only as a coach, but as a role model and uh, someone who they could rely on you know, for a lot of things in life. So. Push up, Billy. Push up, Billy. Push up. You gotta be there. But I think what you know that brought back to me was the importance to have passion and caring for what you do. You know, loving what you do every single day. But at the end of the day, even if you know you're um, you know yelling at a referee or if you're coaching, it all comes back to you know a smile and a handshake and being able to relate to those people afterwards. He was a special person, and I think that uh, you know loyalty and all the things that meant more to him than anything else are the things that Notre Dame stands for. Um, and I think he felt that and thought that and that was part of the reason why we came here. And then obviously it's just affected our family tremendously and my brother and I and my mom and all of us. And um, you know, I think he kind of knew that. I think the thing that I remember most about Jang is his fine mix of quality character traits that he possessed. And what I mean by that is Jang was uh, fiercely independent on one side, but he was also the consummate team player in our structure of things and uh, had a, a great sense of playing together on the field, not only in his tactics and, and passing the ball and scoring goals, but uh, also defending other players. Jang was someone you didn't want to take lightly in any confrontation. If there was a problem, someone was trying to play a little bit dirty against him, Jang would definitely not tolerate that, and he also wouldn't tolerate it against any of his teammates. So he was um, brought a tremendous quality to the experience at that time. I think one of the, the great uh, reflections of, of the strength of that diversity under Roy was just looking at the three strikers one season, Bobby Wiles, Greg Dugas, Chang Jallo, between the three of them in uh, combined careers, over 100 goals. And there you have a player who grew up in England, another player who grew up in the USA, North America, and a third player, uh, Jang, who grew up on the African continent. When Jang passed away, uh, we had the opportunity, several of us, to um, contribute and put together a little bit uh, of a memorial for him in the form of a, a jersey and some photos and articles um, that uh, were framed and assembled. And I had the great pleasure of traveling up into Wisconsin to visit Jang's widow, Fatima, and uh, her beautiful little daughters and her uh, extended family members up there. So it was very memorable. We exchanged a lot of stories. We looked through scrapbooks. And uh, it was a wonderful time and really a time that I'll never forget.
While I was playing for Coach Gordon, uh, we had a few things in common, one of which was that we were both um, around the same age. I was a little bit late to college, and we had young families growing up. Um, so I got to know Roy on a, on a personal basis as well as be, him being my coach. Um, and Roy is just a nice guy. He's a good guy. And as good a coach as he, as he is, was, uh, he's uh, a nicer guy. And uh, for me, that's uh, the most important thing. Among the many positive things that I can say about Coach Gordon, uh, a couple really stick out. Um, one of them is that you had a very eclectic crew, uh, different players from different backgrounds, different um, abilities. You had to teach the basic skills to a few of these players that were athletes but had never played soccer before. Now think about that. You've got to you've got to integrate these players into. Um, players that have, like myself, maybe from a, a soccer playing country, uh, like Jan Jallo and, and Mike Silver, a few others, but also you have people like Lindsay and Doogie that knew the basics. I mean, they grew, they grew up with soccer in Maine, but you had these players that had never played before and you had to teach them the basic skills and now put them in with players like us. So, I mean, that takes a special skill and of course, Coach Gordon did that very well. The other thing um, that really stuck with me, and it stuck with me for the rest of my life, was that I was the penalty taker for the team. And I, I forget what team it was that we were playing, but we got a penalty, and I took the penalty and missed. Yeah, believe it or not, I missed. So uh, a little bit later in the game, we got a, we were awarded another penalty. So I obviously I stepped up. I'm the penalty kicker. And coach said, no, Bob, you know, we're going to have uh, whoever it was, probably Doogie, but I, I forget who it was. He's going to take it. So, of course, I was a little upset and I moved away and whatever. And, of course, that person scored. And later on, I said to coach, I said, coach, you know, I wanted to make up for that penalty I missed. And coach said something that, that has stuck with me forever. And what he said was, Bob, you can't get it back once it's gone. It's gone. You're not going to get two goals for uh, one penalty. Um, it's gone. So amongst all the good things that uh, Coach Gordon have stood for over the years, those two really stand out. Growing up in Northern Virginia, I loved soccer from a young age, and I knew that I wanted to play college soccer uh, when I got older. So when it got to be my senior year, just like everyone else, I wanted to play Division I soccer, and those opportunities weren't happening for me. So I kind of lost interest a little bit and contemplated maybe not playing and just going to college just for school. And fortunately, Coach Gordon showed an interest in me, and I still remember him calling me on the phone and then soon afterwards, I went down to Mary Washington for a visit. Me and my mother went down. We walked around campus with Coach, and I still remember him driving us over to the fields in his car. And when I got there, it just felt right. I could tell that Coach Gordon was someone that cared and uh, someone that I could really look up to for the next four years of my life. Playing for Coach Gordon was a great experience and um, did a great job holding the players accountable and uh, always very, very organized. He was that coach that had everything laid out when he showed up for practice, uh, had the team set up, everything. Knew, knew what was gonna happen ahead of time. Very, very organized, very detailed, um, as good coaches are. And uh, you always knew where you stood with coach as well. I always remember my freshman year, uh, I'd started a few games, five or six games into the season. Been playing okay, and all of a sudden, practicing one day, and the starting 11 goes out, and I'm not in it. And coach hadn't said a word to me, but I wasn't in that starting group and didn't know why. So after practice, I asked what was going on, and uh, right away coach said, you haven't been defending very well. Short and sweet, that's, that's what he said. So next game, I wasn't in the starting lineup. Uh, when I did get to sub in, I probably played one of the best halves of soccer of my life and got my spot back. But just the message was heard loud and clear, and, and coach always had a way of doing that, of getting that message across in an effective way. Not only though did coach give me the opportunity as a player to play college soccer, but 
he's the biggest reason why I'm coaching here at Farmington now. When I graduated college, he was the one that let me come on and coach as an assistant at the University of Mary Washington. And from there, he let me build my confidence a little bit, going out recruiting, let me run some training sessions. Uh, from there, I moved on, and about a year and a half ago, when I was looking to become a head coach, he was the one that suggested I, I look here at UMF. So when people ask me how I went from Virginia to Maine, short answer, Roy Gordon. But Coach has had a huge impact on my life. I, I still talk to him all the time, and he's someone that I always use as a resource, and when I don't have the answers, he always does. But uh, I'm very thankful for what he's done for me, and. And what separated Coach from a lot of other coaches that I've met in my life and, and dealt with is that not only is he a great coach, but he's a great man too.